Welcome to Wasm Cloud Wednesday for December the 8th, 2021. As usual, we'd like to start with the demo. We'll start off with you, Brooks. Go right ahead. All right. Um, I am going to do something that I haven't done in a little while. So just forgive me as I set this up. Okay, you all should be able to see like a washboard screen now um, and like my terminal peeking in, in the at the side. Is, is that right? Should be sweet. Okay. Um, so the demo that I have today uh, is actually, oh, yep. Um, the demo that I have today is actually uh, nothing that I have actively contributed to writing. Um, it's a little, you know, community spotlight. There are a couple of features that have come into WASH lately that I think really improve uh, the experience, the, the developer experience of using WASH and some in some parts of the productivity. So I just wanted to show off a couple of those uh, because they are released now with um, WASM or with WASH 0.7.2. So uh, to get started, I'm going to do a couple of things. Um, Steve wrote this XKCD actor a little while ago, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and set up all the things and um, link defs and stuff for that. So I built the actor. Um, I'm going to follow the, um, the process that we have in our documentation so that we can hot reload it, even though I'm not going to be making any um, modifications, just going to show what that looks like. I can start the XKCD actor. I don't know, might as well start a couple of replicas here. Uh, and then this actor links to HTTP client and HTTP server. So I'm gonna start those two providers too. Client, I think it's 035. And server 0.14.6. So we can start those actors, start those two providers. And then, you know, this is the point where you would go and um, you would go and link them together. I'm gonna do this in WASH to show off a couple of things though. So, uh, and I'm also just going to, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do the whole thing in WASH to keep it easy. So thanks to the whole context feature, um, I launched this host on my local. It's all using default values anyways, but with WASH automatically, that's gonna pick up like the local NATS connection thing. So if I run WASH control get hosts, uh, I can get our single host that we have. If I run WASH control get inventory, I can see, oh, that's a little, uh, right, we have five instances. Um, I, I can see you know, all of our different actors and, and providers that we have. So now the next step is gonna be linking them together. And I could do this in the dashboard, but I'll do it in the, um, I'll do it in the, the command line for today. So with wash control, you can do wash control link put, and then you need to provide the actor ID and then the provider ID and then the contract ID. Now, this isn't too bad if it's something you're used to. If you run wash cuddle link put and you know ask for ask for help or something, it'll give you the correct arguments that you need for that. Um, but if you were to do something, say, you know, I'll copy the actor ID from here. We do wash control link put. We do the actor ID, and then we think that we go and copy the provider ID, but we're not looking. We kind of paste really fast. We just kept the actor ID copied. Um, you know, this is something that's happened to me. It's probably happened to you. Um, and then we do uh, Wasm Cloud uh, HTTP client, something like that. Um, thanks to Stuart Harris, which we actually have on the call today, we have this great new feature of validating these public keys. So here, when we're supposed to put an actor ID and a provider ID, we get a nice little message saying, hey, you know, this looks like an actor ID and not a provider public key. Uh, which is awesome. We, we don't put a random link that doesn't link to anything. Um, we can go back in, copy the provider ID, paste it, and then actually publish that link. And you'll see that that got defined fine in the, the UI. So this actual, or this also works for something if we do control link put, we take the actor ID and then say we take the HTTP server, um, provider ID and we paste it in there and then we accidentally backspace for a couple characters or something. So we go to publish this Wasm Cloud HTTP server and we wanna listen on port 
8080, for example, we get an invalid value for the pro provider key again. Um, it's supposed to be 56 characters, but instead we get 53 characters. Now this actually happens in a bunch of different places in WASH. Um, there's a little bit more validation that I, uh, you know, I want to do. I want to run through the, the entire command line API and make sure that anywhere you use a public key, um, you can, uh, you're, you're getting this kind of validation. Um, but for now, for the things that really matter with these positional arguments, uh, you're getting full validation on this. So you shouldn't have any more problems about posting or, or pasting in the wrong type of public key, things like that. So anyways, uh, that uh, once we define that link properly, we actually get, um, this is all that we needed for the XKCD actor to work. So if we go to this other page and refresh, we get our, our random XKCD comic from localhost 8080. Um, I will only refresh a couple of times to show you because, um, you know, you never know what's going to come up on XKCD. Uh, but I wanted to show off uh, two other things uh, that, that came into WASH recently. So um, one thing that has been a semi-high point of friction is deleting a link definition. Um, and that's because for this, you don't actually need to give all the same things that you do for putting a link definition. You provide an actor ID and a contract ID. Many people expect to, to be the actor ID and the provider ID. Um, and this is just because we don't need the provider ID to delete, delete this link definition. So. If we were to do what, what many people do um, on accident, you know, try to delete the link definition between XKCD and HTTP server, we get a nice error message saying, hey, it looks like you used a provider ID and not a contract ID. I think this fix actually came in from Taylor who probably did it and got so frustrated that he fixed it immediately. Um, so that was, that was great. Um, so, you know, you're not going to make that mistake anymore. And the last thing that I wanted to show off came from Matt Jobride. Um, he contributed earlier in Wasm Cloud's development, but has just been getting back into doing things for, um, for .50, uh, which is great, or for like our OTP runtime. So now um, you may have remembered using WashPAR to inspect a remote uh, provider archive. If we did something like Azure CR.io, um, what's a provider that I haven't uh, inspected in a while? Um, let's say Redis Europe 14, I think is a real thing. Um, you know, we look at this, this provider and we wait for a while. It takes around five seconds because it has to download that provider archive, take a look at it, and then, um, and then actually show you the results. Um, now, what we have with WashPAR Inspect is uh, by default, it's going to inspect your local OCI cache. This is exactly what the host does. Um, and so adding this feature kind of makes WASH do the same thing that the WASM Cloud host does. It looks at your local cache. If you already have a provider or an actor, it loads it from there and then we'll display the results. So if we did WASH PAR inspect for our HTTP server, which this is what I just started with the host, so I know it's cached. We can run uh, no cache or add this flag. It'll pull the new one from OCI. You can use this if you're updating your, your tags, the same tags. But we can also remove that flag entirely, do that, and then the command finishes in, in a fraction of a second. Much quicker to load the provider archive or the provider binary from disk than it is to download. Um, and this, you know, may not seem like a huge deal, a little less than a second to four seconds or so, but I also have pretty good internet. Um, you know, if you're in a low bandwidth situation, a 25 megabyte provider could take you, you know, 10 seconds to download. Um, and this also works for, for claims as well, but, you know, a two megabyte actor is, a, is less pronounced in terms of download time. So. Anyway, so I, I just wanted to kind of show one of the examples we haven't shown in a little while. Uh, and in doing that, uh, show off some of the new features that, that Stuart and, and Matt and Taylor, you know, the, the nice community members have put into uh, making the experience a lot better for people. So happy to take any, any questions. Um, 
I'm not going to take any any credit. You can direct that to the community members. But uh, yeah, any anybody have any questions or want me to refresh the XKCD comic anymore? Anything like that? One more would be great. One more. Okay, one more. <laughs> technically, start your sentence with technically. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. definitely worthwhile. That's great, Brooks. Um, quick question. Um, I love the hot reloading feature, um, and I haven't looked yet, but I don't know if Wash can start an act with hot reloading. It can. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was... Um, I can show that off really quick if you want. Uh, I, I probably missed the demo if you demoed it before. No worries. I did demo it in the, I think it was the last community meeting, but um, no harm. Might as well do it now. Um, you know, so just for um, for example, like essentially what we're doing when we start the actor from file, like with hot reloading, we're just going to watch the signed actor in the build directory and wait for any changes. Um, yeah. So it's going to be like changing claims. If you had more capabilities, any change to the code. Um, so if I go in and look at the XKCD actor, um, I don't actually know the best thing to um, change here. Uh, say like, I don't know, we, um, let's just change like the comic number to be like five or something. So it always gives us the same comic. Hopefully I didn't pick an, an awful comic. Run make, as long as I didn't mess up the um, type there, um, you can see the status kind of popped immediately to awaiting. Um, it happened too quick for you to see it actually. Mm -hmm. It just scaled down all those actors and started new ones. Um, but if we refresh, we get blown apart, we keep refreshing, you know, I guess that's just comic number five. Um, and then we can also like check out that, that change just to revert it back to the original run make. Um, and then pretty much as soon as that happens, a second later, it'll scale down and scale back up and we can hit refresh and we'll get our random comic again. So that, that's amazing, but you started the actor with the dashboard, right? So I how did. would you start it with wash for hot reloading? So you can't start it. I'm sorry right. if that was your original question. Yeah, no, no, yeah. That's what I was asking, but it's fine. Okay. Um, I mean, it was a good apologies. opportunity. To, no, 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 no. It's an amazing feature. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice to yeah. see. Yeah. We kind of toyed with that idea if we wanted to, you know, an, enable like live updating from like an OCI reference, like if you keep pushing to the OCI reference. Mm. Um, and, you know, what we kind of landed on is like if you're doing development on an actor, you know, you're going to be writing that code locally. The quickest thing to happen is you making a change to that signed uh, WASM uh, file. Um, and, you know, another idea there is that likely when you're using like wash to administer a cluster, maybe more like a QA or a production type of environment when you wouldn't want things to just like automatically hot reload. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the, um, you know, so for now, the way that we have it implemented is we can, you can start an actor from a file and do hot reloading, but that has to be done through the, the washboard. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's great. Uh, that's awesome. Any more questions for Brooks on uh, the feature set there? Uh, that's phenomenal. Um, uh, Taylor, I noticed that we just tweeted a few things around the new Helm chart. Do you want to make any comments or anything? Yeah, so we have a fully functional battle station um, that you can install at will. Um, no visits from the emperor required, and um, <clears throat> you, know, you just uh, you can actually add it as a Helm repo now. Um, so it's hosted. You can um, pull down as pull down the repo, or sorry, um, add the repo and then Helm repo up and be able to get all the the latest chart goodness. Um, most recent features we added were the ability to specify host labels um, for not the not anything in Kubernetes, but the labels that go inside of a host. So on Brooks's example, he just showed the washboards, you could see labels on there. So now you can manually specify labels. This is important if you're if you're uh, building something up inside of Kubernetes, so you can tell which um, which uh, thing hosts in your in your lattice are running Kubernetes, and then if there's any specific Kubernetes things for like your Kubernetes services to talk to things in the lattice, um, <clears throat> that is 
um, all there. And so, yes, we have, um, uh, you'll see here, that's the latest release of the Helm chart we just pulled out. Um, the, the instructions for it are found, if you really, if you want detailed instructions about different provisioning things, you can go to Liam and go to Wasm Cloud OTP and then Wasm Cloud Host is the directory in there. And then there's the chart directory. Top, yeah, and then that's actually included with the chart, so you can look at the README. Um, but right here, you have the how you can run the chart, how you can install the chart, the various structures you can set it up. So you can set it up with LeafNode. I think I explained this in a previous uh, call as well, kind of showed this running. But um, it's we fixed a few bugs. We found a few different things, cleared out some stuff, and then um, are continuing to improve this as we do this with people who are using um, who are using Wasm Cloud. So. That's it. So I have. Uh, that's a great call out. Um, you know, if anybody watches this call and um, you know later and would like more information or some assistance in getting this up and running, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us on uh, open uh, via our Slack channel or um, on Twitter or wherever you find us. You know, the we've actually been helping a couple of large companies um, just integrate this right into their customized Kubernetes deployments. And it's been really informative for the team as folks want to start leveraging the power of Wasm Cloud um, uh, for things like multi-cloud uh, to reduce maintenance and development costs and to make their developers uh, happier. Um, so if you have any questions, please let us know. Or if you have uh, some sort of use case or integration, we'd love to get your feedback and, uh, and your help. Um, uh, any further questions for Taylor? All right, that's great. Um, uh, no uh, updated community news or anything uh, like that this week. Um, uh, open floor, anyone have anything that they wanted to chit chat about? Um, I do have a community call out. I've got two issues that I would love to call out for people to take a look at. Side them on. Back to you. Uh, yeah, that worked. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see. Okay, um, just Chrome window, no terminal this time, but I have uh, two good first issues that, um, you know, that I, that I love to call out for the community if they want to take a look at contributing. So uh, the first one, I guess both, both of them are in WASH today. Um, this is an issue that I kind of found, um, uh, I found when I was looking through the uh, or doing some scripting with Wash last week. Uh, as of Wasm Cloud dot fifty one, uh, we decided to change the way that uh, the control interface works in regards to starting actors and providers. You may have seen it a little bit in our demo, but what we do now is, you know, when you start a provider like HTTP server, it can take maybe five seconds or so to download that from an OCI registry and then actually start it. So instead of running wash control start provider, waiting for everything to download and properly start, we take that information and we take command, parse it, make sure it's all valid, and then go through the process of, um, of starting that provider um, and, and downloading it from an OCI registry. So I'd love to just clarify these logs for wash because previously they were like assertive things whether they you know if you get a successful act from the command that means the actor or the provider started successfully um, but now because we're just requesting it uh, and we need to monitor it for for events like we in order to actually know that the provider started we need to wait for a provider started event um, that's something that's a different issue all i'd really love for this is to just refine the logs a little bit to tell the full story, you know, something like um, start provider requests uh, received successfully for starting this provider, something that, you know, won't cause confusion if you try to start a tag that didn't exist. And then, um, and then, for example, you get this success message, but it didn't actually start. So that's the first one. This is a the great first issue to help improve our documentation and our clarity for, for that. Um, and the second one is uh, similar to the things that I was talking about a little um, a little earlier today. Oh, let's see. Um, similar to the kind of the demo that I did earlier today, this one 
uh, talks about wash control link put, uh, but it's specifically talking about the contract ID. So for the actor ID and the provider ID, we validate that it's a proper either module key or service key respectively for that like 56 character thing. Um, but for the contract ID, we don't have any input validation. Um, and that's, that's because the, you know, the contract IDs that we use for Wasm Cloud or, or for um, Cosmonic, you know, that we have like all lowercase colon in the middle to separate things. That's just a convention. It's not a requirement. You can actually make your contract IDs to be anything. Um, so what I'd love for, for success criteria for this one is only, you know, if you go and you put in a contract ID and it's a 56 character uppercase key that starts with like an M or a V, you know, the things that we're expecting for a public key, would love to just put out a, an error or a warning message, just like the wash control link delete that says, hey, this looks like a, um, a provider key perhaps you meant to put a contract ID. So extending some of the things that Stuart has already done um, to, to really help our input validation there and to contract IDs is, is really what we're looking for here. So yeah, that's that's the community call out. A couple of good issues that would really, you know, they're, they're relatively low effort in terms of implementation difficulty um, and relatively high impact for us and, and for people in the community. So as always, I'll get those like, uh, I don't know if we'll, we may do a tweet for it. I'll put it out in our community Slack, just the, the links to those um, issues so that you can, you can find them easily. That's awesome again, Brooks. And um, I'll ask uh, Jordan to follow up on uh, tweeting those particular community call outs out. He's been adding, you know, like uh, some color on the videos and stuff like that and got some good reactions on that kind of stuff. He's also blown up our Twitter feed. Like he just, he, he's just putting in all the emojis and all that kind of stuff. I, I love what he's doing there. I mean, it just um, brings a, a little bit of uh, fun and color and humanity to, you know, like technology, which I think is super fun. Uh, Bailey, I know you're working hard on the SQL updates, the SQL driver. Uh, but I think we probably could have a better discussion if we wait till maybe next week if Steve's here. So um, I'm not sure if there are things that you wanted to comment on or ask for feedback or anything. Yeah, no, uh, I, I think I'm trucking along there. Um, I think my code review will be fairly sizable. I can look into ways to try to break it up to make it easier to review. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe next week I'll, I'll have something to show. Okay, that sounds awesome. Um, all right, great. Well, I hope everybody has. Uh, if there's anything else, maybe it's open floor. Who's who's uh, taking a look at uh, fixing main after the update to the Wasm RPC? Yes, we probably should talk about that. Um, could you could you talk a little bit more about that? Like, is it is it uh, the main like SQL DB provider that is failing to build? Yeah, uh, I think the error I got was something like um, the trait. Right now, the provider doesn't satisfy the message dispatcher trait. Uh, I poked around a little bit, and I saw that the Wasm Bus RPC version was upgraded and downgraded, and I don't get that error. So, um, but uh, I, I, since I was kind of in the middle of my work, I just uh, rebased back to an older commit and <laughs> kept on going. <laughs> Yeah, so we we did release a, a minor bump to Wasm Bus RPC. Um, so you know that it's a a breaking change for our, our pre one dot zero dot zero stuff. Um, and as a part of that, we also bumped all of our interfaces by a minor version. So the latest minor version bump of all of our interfaces should go with the latest minor version bump of Wasm Bus RPC, which is zero dot six. Um, and if you have like a mismatch between the two, then it'll give you things like, you know, maybe you're using two different like versions of Wasm Bus RPC, or you need this trait and you don't have it that 0 0.6 is expecting. So, um, yeah, I can, I can follow up and just kind of do a little audit of the capability providers repo and make sure that, you know, either the interfaces and the Wasm Bus version, like that they haven't been upgraded independently. Um, and I think I did bump the SQL DB interface um, 
So that could have been the problem that you're running into if the SQL DB interface bumped and Wasmbus didn't or vice versa. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I thought I was on the latest of everything uh, as of this morning, but you know, <laughs> I'm kind of new to a lot of this, so I might might have missed different things. It's it's been kind of a Wasmbus RPC is one of those things that's kind of ubiquitous across a lot of our repos. You know, it it drives how like capability providers talk to the hosts. It drives how actors can talk to capability providers and you know, all of our interfaces are powered by it. And, you know, so, so there's a lot of things get, that get touched with any breaking change to Wasmbus RPC. Um, and I know that we're trying to look into ways to like do that a little bit safer or really understand when we're going to do a breaking change with a minor bump that it's not going to affect people without them knowing. Um, so that, that was our, that was our goal with the, with doing like a breaking bump. Well, um, and to clarify, so I'm a, uh... I'm using the path reference in my cargo toml. So I'm getting a newer <laughs> version in the capability provider. So like, I think you'll see this if you try to bump versions in the capability provider. Yeah, okay. Um, then yeah, well, well, Bailey, I can definitely follow up with you on Slack after to make sure you've got the right versions and everything. Um, but I'll audit our capability providers repo and make sure if you you're pulling it down like from from main should be all of the compatible versions cool yeah I, I think the thing that i would do is check main main's probably fine run cargo upgrade and i think you should see it um okay uh brooks you know it's uh, timely considering our conversation this morning about uh priorities and things like that um but this one feels like uh something we should maybe get uh get patched um quickly or um make sure we've got this one going um anything else that we wanted to bring up today or run uh if not i'll go ahead and stop recording and we can hang out uh, for a little bit in chat everybody have a great week